Praise the Lord Jesus. The Lord bless each and every one of you today. Before we start, amen, let's, let's pray, amen, let's pray that God has his will and his way, amen. Let's pray that God uses me to, to minister his word to his people today, amen. Yes, Heavenly Father, oh my God, Lord, I come before you, Lord, and I ask, and Lord, I pray, my God, Lord, with the power of your spirit, my God, Lord, that you would help me, Lord, to, to preach, my God, Lord, this word, my God, Lord, how you want me to preach it, my God. And I pray, Father God, Lord, for your anointing power, Lord, upon me this day, my God. And I pray, Father God, Lord, for a move of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Without your Spirit moving, without your anointing, Lord, upon me, my God, there's nothing, Lord, that I can do, Lord. And I know that, my God, Lord, that I can't do anything without you, my God. Lord Jesus, that's why I need you, my God. Lord, that you will move, my God. But most importantly, that your name will be glorified throughout this message, my God. Lord, I ask and I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So today the Lord has, has directed me to, to a message that is always needed for our day-to-day -day life as a Christian, as a child of God, and as a, and as a people who, who builds our life upon God's Word and holds to the truths of God's Word for, for, for direction, for, for counsel, and for instruction on how to live our life as a, as a Christian and as a child of God. And I believe it's coming to the time where God wants to give us a word of self-examination. I know it's a bit of a mouthful with them words, but in simple terms, I believe that, that God wants us to, to search our own life and to keep our, our life in check as the scriptures teach us to do so, amen. Because if we don't keep ourselves in check, if we don't allow God's word to keep us on a straight path, if we don't line our life up to the word of God, then there could be a strong possibility that we are either drifting, stumbling, sinning or falling away and the bible shows us in 2 2 corinthians chapter 13 and lamentations chapter 3 it gives us the same meaning and it paints for us the, the the same picture to test ourselves and examine our ways and how we are living our life before the lord amen and today brothers and sisters that's what we're going to do through god's word we're going to check our own life and as we begin to go through scripture, it will show us if we have things in our life or areas in our life that needs, that needs straightening up or that needs changing. And this will be shown to us as we begin to use the plumb line of God. But I pray that God helps me by his grace and by his mercy that the Lord would help me to present this message in the most, the most loving and the most graceful way that I can possibly preach this message to his people today, amen. Because there's no better thing for me and you today than to listen to the word of God, understand what God is saying to us and what God is showing us through his word, and then also apply it to our lives, amen. Because that's where, that's where we're going to grow together, amen. That's where the church is going to be built up, and that's where the church is going to grow, amen. When we, get, when, we, when we listen to the word of God and take it on board in our life, amen. If you've got a Bible... I'm going to be reading from the book of Amos, or Amos, however you, however you pronounce it. The book of Amos, chapter 7, and verse 7. Once you're there, just give me an amen, and then we'll begin to read together. The book of Amos, chapter 7, and verse 7. Michael said, if you went to Jonah, you went too far, so go back. Is everybody there? Praise the Lord. And the word of the Lord says, Thus he showed me, Behold the Lord stood on a wall, made with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. And the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not pass by them any more. The high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. I will rise with the sword against the house of Jeroboam. Thank you, Lord, for your precious word. Okay, so just to give us a, 
a quick background on what was happening at this time so we can get a good understanding of what this passage of scripture is speaking about. We see that God, he gives the prophet Amos vision and prophecy concerning Israel as a nation. And it was said at this time that Israel was prospering greatly with prosperity and wealth. But the Bible says that Israel was also being ruled by a, a wicked king called King Jeroboam. And the Bible says when prosperity sets in, this also began to um, increase Israel's religious and moral corruption. The Bible says that the iniquity and the sinfulness, the, the wickedness of the people, it started to increase. And as a nation, the people of Israel were starting to live wrong in the sight of God. And as you go through the book of Amos, you, as you begin to read um, the scriptures of God's word, we see that Israel was falling into different kinds of categories. And the categories that Israel was falling into, they wasn't so pleasing in the sight of God. Because Israel was falling into the category of idolatry. They were allowing different things to, to take the place of God. And the Bible says they were bringing sacrifice and worship unto false gods that King um, Jeroboam had set up. The Bible shows us that, that um, Israel was falling into the category of sinful immorality. They were living sinful and wrong in the sight of God in the things that they were doing and the way that they were living. And they were also falling into the category of pride. They were allowing pride to, to, to come into, into their life and they were allowing pride to, to make its home in their life. And we see that Israel was starting to fall away. They were starting to, to drift from God. Their life they were living was leading them away from the Lord. And from chapter 1 to, to chapter 6, we see that God is warning them through the prophet Amos that God is going to set judgment into place. But at this time, the Bible shows us that God was also being graceful with the people of Israel. Because the Bible says that God was calling Israel to come to repentance. God was giving them an opportunity where they could put their life right before the Lord. And as we get into chapter 7, as we've just read from, we start to see the visions of this judgment. From the, from the vision and the, the, the judgment of the locusts upon the land. The, the judgment on how the, the land of Israel was going to be consumed by fire. And also the vision and the judgment of the plumb line of God. How God was going to set a plumb line in the midst of his people to show them how crooked and how out of level the Israelites would live in their life before God. And it was coming to the time where the Bible says that God's patience with Israel was starting to come to an end. We see that God gives the, the, the people warning after warning, warning them to, to turn away from it all, to turn away from their life of sin and, and, and the things that they were doing wrong before the Lord. And this is where God uses the prophet Amos to, 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 to warn the nation of Israel to stop living how they are living wrong before God, to stop living in sin, to stop with the, with the worship of the false gods, but to turn away from it all and come to repentance, come back to their place where, where their life was right standing before God. And tonight, brothers and sisters, that's what I want to do. I want, to, I want us to focus on the plumb line of God. And you may be asking yourself the question, well, what is a plumb line? What does a plumb line do? What is a plumb line for? What is the purpose of a plumb line? For those who don't know what a plumb line is, a plumb line was a tool that was used to see how level and how straight a brick wall was. It was simply made up with a long piece of string with a metal weight at the end of it. And this was known as a plumb bob. And what the builder would do as he began to build a wall, each course, he would, he would start to level it with this plumb bob. He would put the piece of string on the top of the brick and he would allow the plumb bob to come down the wall. But this will give the builder an accurate level. It will show him if this wall is level, if it's plumb. But this plumb bob also shows the builder if there's any bricks that's unlevel, if there's any, any, def any defects or anything wrong with the wall. This plumb bob will show him if there's any, any, any bricks that's out of alignment. And as we read from verse 7, it says, This the Lord showed me. Behold, the Lord stood on a wall made 
with a plumb line. So here, this, this wall is representing Israel as a nation. In this vision, God was showing the prophet how, how God was setting a plumb line among his people to show them how broken and how, how crooked and how out of alignment they was living their lives before God. And you know, brothers and sisters, when you, when you get a brick wall that is weakened, when you get a brick wall that, that is not plumb and that is not level, do you know what will eventually happen to that brick wall? Well, firstly, eventually it will become good for nothing. And then secondly, it will end up collapsing. It will just be a, a heap of bricks up the floor with no purpose. And this is what God was showing the, the, the prophet through these visions. He was, he, he was shown how Israel was in the same situation before God. Because they was involved with so much idol worship. They was living in adultery. They was living sinful and they was falling away from God. And where they was, where they was involved with so much in a worldly state, they became just like this brick wall. Weakened and collapsed. They had no structure. No support, no godly counsel, and he definitely wasn't being led by the word of God. So this is why the prophet was sent to bring them warning for, uh, for, for Israel to show them that judgment was going to come upon them. And where God said he will pass by them no more, the Bible shows us that Israel was eventually destroyed. It was left in ruins over their sin over their idol worship, over their worldly way of living and the sin that they was involved in. They destroyed themselves because they allowed themselves to turn away from the Lord. All the idol worship they was involved in, the, the life of sin that they was living, this drove them away from the Lord. But a question that I want to put out to us today, and it can be a bit of a hard question for us to an answer. And like I said from the beginning of this message, and also for this question, it's a question of self-examination, to search our own out, because I can't answer this question for you, and you can't answer this question for me. But it's a question that I've got to begin to ask myself. And the question that I want to put out to us today, if God was to set a plumb line in the midst of his church, meaning us today, how much would we be on level? And how much would we be shown out of plumb? How much are we living our life out of alignment? How much are, are we living wrong before the Lord? And you may be thinking to yourself, well, how do, how do we know this? How do we figure out how much we're, we're, we're living out of alignment or how, our life is unlevel? And this can be shown very easy as we begin to use the plumb line of God. But a question you might be asking yourself in the beginning of this message is what is the plumb line of God today? How do we know what the plumb line of God is? I'll tell you exactly what the plumb line of God is today. is the living word of God. That's what the plumb line of God is today. The living word of God. And how is this plumb line used? How is this plumb line used as a, as, a, as a Christian? It is used so that we can test and examine ourselves according to the scriptures. The word of God will show us how true we are living our life according to the word of God. The word of God will start to show us this. And you know, let's begin to, let's begin to ask ourselves. Because the, the, Bible, the Bible shows us certain ways, and the Bible teaches us certain ways to live our life right according to the word of God. And you know, begin to ask yourself today, are we living righteous? Are we living true? Are we doing what is right in the sight of God? Are we living holy? Are we living set apart? Are we de denying the flesh? Are we denying this world? Are we denying our old ways of life? Are we denying the, the old man and the old woman that we used to be? Are we living by the word of God? That's a question we've got to ask, ask ourselves. Are we living by the word of God? Are we allowing God's word to be molded and shaped into our life? Are we truly living our life for Jesus? Is our life truly sold out for him? Amen. But if we had to be honest with ourselves, and if I've got to be honest with myself... Sometimes that old man and that old woman can start to creep back in. Sometimes in my own life, I can, I can give that old man a, a foothold to come back into my life. Sometimes we can get into, into what the, we can give into what the flesh is desiring. Sometimes we can find ourselves doing things that we shouldn't be doing. 
For examples, we can probably go back to telling lies again to try and get, out, get ourselves out of situations or even try to better our own life. And we can go back to telling the old lie. If it's living in idolatry, allowing things to take the place of God. And you know, brothers and sisters, I want to explain to you today. Idolatry doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to worship a statue and give it worship. But idolatry, idolatry can start as soon as you allow things to replace God in your life. As soon as you push God to one side, you allow other things to come in. That's when idolatry starts. We can find ourselves holding, holding hatred in our heart and having unforgiveness for certain people. And you know, this, this allows pride to rule our life. This allows pride to set in, just like the Israelites was doing. And it can be the same with our life today. And you know, brothers and sisters, there's so many things and so many areas where we can fall. And as I begin to list them off and as I begin to examine ourselves according to the word of God, you might be thinking to yourself, just like I did, you know what it is, Lord, I've let you down in this area. I've let you down in that area. Lord, I've stumbled here and I've fallen there. I've went to this place where I shouldn't have went. I've said this thing what I shouldn't have said. And we can let the Lord down in so many areas. And you know, if I have to be honest, it's the echinators. When we let the Lord down, it can truly hurt us. For those, for those who truly love the Lord and want to really follow the Lord, it can hurt us when we let the Lord down. When we fail Him, when we fall into sin, it can hurt us. But the thing is, when we stumble, when we fall, when we let the Lord down, when we, when we sin in, in, in different kind of areas, the best thing that we can do is to do what the Israelites should have done from the beginning. And that's what, that was to return to the Lord. Return to the Lord. Come before the Lord with all of our problems. Come before the Lord with all of our weaknesses. Come before the Lord with all of our failings and all of our sins and put right the wrong that we do before God. Because as a child of God, if we truly love the Lord, we want to put right the things that we do wrong. And come before the Lord in repentance, just as he was calling the nation of Israel to come to repentance. Come before the Lord in true repentance and come to the one whose grace and mercy endures forever. Amen. And you know, brothers and sisters, I do thank God for his grace and mercy. I do. Because without the grace of God, without the mercy of God, we won't be able to stand. If we've got to be honest, that's why I thank God for his grace and mercy. But listen to this. This is how, this is how, this is how good God's grace and God's mercy is. That God Almighty would allow sinful people to come before him in true repentance with all our failings with all of our weaknesses, with all our sins, and for God to say to us that I love you, I care for you, and I forgive you. Because that's what the, that's what the, that, that's what the Bible tells us. That's what the Bible shows us. Because we say to God today, that doesn't, that doesn't shun us when we fall. He doesn't turn us away when we sin. But he calls us by his word, and he gives his access into the throne room of grace to confess all our failings. Confess all our problems, all our weakness and all our sins. And to come before him in true repentance. And by his wonderful grace, we can be forgiven. Amen. And that's what the Bible says. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible says he is able and he will forgive us if we come before him and confess our sin before him, amen. But the important thing is, brothers and sisters, is to confess our sin, to learn by what we have done wrong, and to commit them sins no more. To learn by what we do wrong, not to keep falling in the, in the same areas, but to learn by their mistakes, confess it before the Lord, turn away from it, and then commit them sins no more, amen. And you know, brothers and sisters, if, if we have to be real, it can be a, an hard old walk, walking with the Lord. If we've got to be honest, sometimes it, it can be hard. And there will be times where we stumble, there will be times where we fall, and times where we let, down, let God down. But when we do, and when we have been shown through the word of God, what we have done wrong, brothers and sisters, let's do what the nation of Israel should have done from the beginning. Let's listen to the warnings of God, because that's what the Bible does. It warns us, when I let God down, when I sin, when I fall in different areas, the word of God warns me. It shows me what I'm doing wrong. But the thing is, I need to return back to the Lord. Amen. And you know, brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I want my life. I don't want my life to, to turn away from the Lord. 
I don't want my, I don't want my life to, to start drifting away from the Lord. I don't want my life to be unpleasing towards God. Because I'm wrapped up in so much sin. I'm wrapped up so much in this world. I don't want my life to be pleasing, unpleasing to God. And this is why it's important. This is why it's important that, that we keep ourselves in check. And that we begin to examine ourselves daily according to the word of God. Amen. And that's how we keep our life on a straight path. That's how we, when we begin to examine ourselves. And this is how we are able not to start drifting. This is how we're able to, to teach ourselves to live right before God. This is how we keep ourselves on that path of purity. Because Psalms 119 and verse 9. This passage of scripture here, it gives us a question. But then it also gives us the answer. It asks every individual a question. Psalms 119 verse 9. It says, how can a young man cleanse his way? So it's asking every individual, how can you cleanse your way? How can you keep yourself pure? It says, by taking heed according to your word. By listening to the plumb line of God. Listening to the living word of God. When the Bible shows us that our life is starting to become a level, begin to put it into place with the word of God. Amen. When the Bible shows us that our life is on plumb and it's ready to collapse, begin to hold it together by the word of God and put it right by the word of God. Amen. Because I don't know about you, brothers, brothers and sisters, but I want my life, I want my life to be pleasing towards him. I want my, I want my life to, to honor him and, and to, to glorify him in what I do in the, in the way that I conduct my life and the way that I live my life for Jesus. I want my life to be pleasing to the Lord. Don't use. I want my life to be pleasing to the Lord. I want God to see that I'm trying to live righteous. I want God to see that I'm trying to live holy and set apart. I want God to, to see that I'm trying my best to live my life for him. Amen. To live my life according to what the word of God teaches me. And brothers and sisters, yes, there will be times where we, where we stumble, where we fall, where we, let, where we let the Lord down. But let's keep Listen to what the word of God teaches us, amen. What the word of God is telling us. Let's not keep repeating the, 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 the same sins over and over and over again. But let's come before the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, you know all my failings. You know all my weaknesses. You know the areas where I let you down. You know where, you know where I stumble, where I fall. But Lord Jesus, that's why I need you. And Lord, by your grace and by your mercy, Lord, I can overcome these areas. I can overcome these things where I keep letting you down. I keep stumbling and I keep falling. By his grace, brothers and sisters, we can overcome all this. But we need to return to the Lord, to confess everything before him, to, to learn what the plumb line of God is showing us, to listen to the word of God, and to pick up our cross and carry on living our life right by the word of God. Amen. Let's bow our heads and let's begin to pray.